Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Utopia. If you are a boater, fisherman, or just really observant, you may have noticed checkpoints along Utah's highways stopping all boaters. These officials are searching for the quagga mussel, an invasive exotic species that is infiltrating our Utopia. Today, we will share the specifics of that dramatic development, and if you stick around, we will take you mountain biking high above Salt Lake City on a ridge with views of the valley and the town of Park City. But first up, our feature story, the quagga mussel invasion. Quagga, sounds exotic, and that's exactly the problem. Deer Creek Reservoir, beautiful for boating, fishing, but diving? This water is not warm. And five feet below the thermal climb, it's even colder. What would possess people to slip beneath these frigid waters? Coaga mussels. These divers are looking for adult coaga mussels and larvae called villagers. There is something going on at Deer Creek Reservoir. We had one single water sample that we collected in October 2014 show up positive for quagga mussel villagers. Quagga mussels are considered an invasive exotic species. This means they are not native to Utah and they have no predators to keep populations in check. Invasive exotic species are categorized as such because of their ability to cause harm to the environment and ecological equilibrium. Quagga mussels are originally from the Ukraine area, so kind of Eastern Europe. They think they showed up in North America in the Great Lakes in the mid to late 1980s through a ballast um, ship and basically a transoceanic vessel filled up ballast tanks with water over there, came to the Great Lakes, dumped it into the Great Lakes with the mussel population, and they've since spread from there. They first showed up in kind of the western U.S. in 2007 when they arrived at Lake Mead, and ever since 2007 they're showing up in different reservoirs around the western U.S. The quagga mussel arrived in Utah's Lake Powell in 2013. These fingernail-sized freshwater bivalves, meaning that they have two shells, are filter feeders that attach to hard surfaces like docks, ramps, and boats, feasting on all the nutrient-rich algae that forms an important strand in the food web. There are economic impacts that are associated with a quagga mussel invasion. Lake Mead first detected quagga mussels in 2007. Uh, after visiting there last month and speaking with some of the National Park Service personnel and staff members there, they have indicated that their maintenance costs for their dam, for their docks, for their marinas, for all their underwater infrastructure, that has basically gone up tenfold. So that's what we can expect at Lake Powell over the next decade. And because Utah is the second driest state, much of the water is collected in reservoirs and then distributed to consumers. Hence, a plethora of pipes, pumps, and valves needed for transport. Quagga mussels are renowned for clogging pipes and infestation presents a huge challenge to maintaining water infrastructure. So it's estimated that if the Central Utah Project were to become infested with quagga mussels, it would cost the state of Utah approximately an extra $25 million a year just to maintain water flow to the Wasatch Front. So that extra expense is obviously passed on to the consumer and the taxpayer in some form. So we, sh we all have some sort of concern and we all have a vested interest in keeping them out. If you like to spend time fishing Utah's lakes and reservoirs, pay attention because your hobby is directly threatened. For example, 
Quagga mussels may replace species at the base of the food chain that striped bass feed on. Without food, the striped bass cannot survive. Because of the growing danger posed by quagga mussels, Nathan spends time each year training a network of Utah Department of Wildlife employees, subcontractors, and volunteers. They are taught how to identify quagga mussels that may be hitchhiking on boats. He teaches them how to decontaminate boats that may be infested. And he educates the educators so they may reach the public with their message. So right now, we actually have planted some mussels on this boat. Um, we've glued them in different areas that, where mussels would actually be attached. So these technicians are going through, looking at all the high-risk areas, feeling around different places of the hole. The very juvenile form of mussels can sometimes be felt as like sandpaper. They're very hard to identify. So that's one way to identify some of the juvenile but then also you're looking for those attached adults that could be, you know, up to an inch in size. So yeah, you got, see, muscle right there. Nice and protected, dark area up underneath this. Yep, right there. Yep, two of them right there. So another area we really put a lot of focus on is our interior compartments like this. This is a live well, so people go out to fish, they put fish in there, they fill it up with water from the lake. Now, if this boat has been at Lake Powell or Deer Creek or another uh, muscle-affected water, that's a problem because that water that's retained in these compartments can harbor the larval form of mussels that we call villagers. So in one cup of water from Lake Powell, we might see up to 10,000 villagers. So that's a problem because if this water makes it from this boat to another one of our reservoirs, all of a sudden you might possibly be introducing a new population of quagga mussels to that area. Likewise, we have other compartments up here we're also worried about. In some of these compartments, people like to put life jackets, uh, tow ropes, anything that may be used out on the water. Could have gotten wet, they use it, they throw it in here, it's still wet, it, re it remains wet and all of a sudden they put that out somewhere else because it's still wet it still might have muscles attached that are alive so that's another possible risk another big thing anchors anchors are huge We've, we're starting to see a lot of attached muscles on anchor anchors and acre ropes don't go away folks more utopia coming up next